my dudes, it's Demi, and today I'm taking you around all of Walt Disney World because we are going to ride every mode of Disney transportation. Disney World is huge, the parks are far apart, but luckily there are a bunch of options to help you get where you need to go. Not only are we going to ride every mode of transportation, we are going to visit all four parks and Disney Springs and do at least one thing in each park. I'm super excited, so let's just get into it. Let's ride all around Walt Disney World and let's go get into some hygiene. So we are starting our journey off in Disney Springs, the downtown shopping and dining district here in Disney where you do not need a park ticket to enter. You can get to Disney Springs by either parking here for free, taking Uber or Lyft, or taking a bus from the resorts or the other mode of transportation, which we will be doing today. But first we have to do something in Disney Springs and I think the best thing to do is get some caffeine to get this day going. There are two Starbucks in Disney Springs. They are both on mobile order on the Starbucks app, not the Disney World app. Got myself a little iced matcha and now it's time to see the other mode of transportation so you can get to Disney Springs. The stage is playing music from this game called Stick Fight Game that I love, and I'm really vibing to it with my matcha. Let's do it. Disney Springs is just so unbelievably beautiful, and it's pretty big. We are on the Marketplace side of Disney Springs, and we are going to pass Days of Christmas and exit through here. And then we get to walk on this lovely bridge and head over to the water taxis. These boats can take you to either Disney Saratoga Springs or Disney's Old Key West Resort or Disney's Port Orleans and Disney's French Quarter Resort. So we are gonna take the water taxi over to Port Orleans French Quarter. If you are staying at Port Orleans Riverside, just stay on. I've actually done tours of both of those resorts and I will link those videos for you here and put it in the description box below. Here we go, taking the Sasagula Sunset. If you have a stroller, make sure to close it up to bring it onto the boat. Before we take off, you may remember there used to be water taxis that would connect both ends of Disney Springs. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, it still has not returned since the closures in 2020, and there's no um, announcement of it coming back. So that may never come back, and that's so sad. exactly 15 minutes to get here from Disney Springs. Now the rest of the people on the boat and the people waiting here are going to Riverside. But we are exiting here in French Quarter because there are so much more Disney transportation to ride. Disney World's Port Orleans French Quarter is one of my all-time favorite Disney resorts. It's so beautiful with the French Quarter design and it's so small here, so you are not walking miles back to your room like you would over in Port Orleans Riverside. This is also, at time of recording, the only place where you can get Mickey beignets. You can get an order of either three or six beignets here at Scat Cats Club Cafe. They are made to order. And because they are made to order, we do not have time to get them because it's already pretty late in the day and I want to make sure we get to all the parks and at least do one fun thing in each park. I want to point out something that a lot of people have questions about and it's how to get to your Disney Resort now because there is no longer free transportation from Magical Express. Personally, I just either Uber or Lyft, whatever is cheaper, but that doesn't really work if you don't have a car seat and you need to put a kid in a car seat. Definitely take a look at Mir's Taxi and Mir's Bus Transportation along with the Sunshine Flyer Bus Transportation. They do cost money. However, if you have a car seat, I highly recommend choosing one of those options. So I planned on doing the minivan transportation right now. That is through the Lyft app. I'm gonna show you a screen recording of how to get those. Those also provide childcare seats. However, there are just none that are available right now and that is a big problem with it. So instead, we are just going to take a paid lift to our next location. And we'll just have to pretend it's a minivan today, but don't worry, there's still plenty of transportation to go. made 
made it to our first park, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and this is where the minivan slash lift and Uber drop-off zone is, and it's my favorite out of all of the parks because it literally drops you off right in front of the park. When you take an Uber to Magic Kingdom, it takes you to the transportation and ticket center, so then you have to take more transportation to get to Magic Kingdom. For Epcot, it takes you pretty much to the front, but it's a kind of a longer walk to the park. And then for Disney's Hollywood Studios, it takes you over by the buses. So this is the closest location out of all the parks where Uber, Lyft, and minivans drop you off. And I forgot to mention earlier, Lyft and Uber drop off and pick up at Disney Springs will be located on the Marketplace side or behind Cirque du Soleil. Uh, beautiful Animal Kingdom, the park that closes early so that when you come later in the day, the lines are not as bad. So as I said earlier, I started filming this video a little later in the day. It's almost five o'clock already. This park is the park that closes the earliest. Today it's closing at 7 p.m. But I love coming to Animal Kingdom in the evening because one, more people come in the morning so it's less crowds and it's less hot because Animal Kingdom is the hottest park, but oh my gosh, it's Kevin. Hi, Kevin! <laughs> so yes, Animal Kingdom, because of all of the plants, is technically the hottest park out of all four parks. And let me tell you, it could be really awful during the summer months. Like, there's a reason we call it Animal Kingdom hot. However, there's Animal Kingdom hot and there's Epcot hot, and nobody talks about Epcot hot. So there is literally like no shade in Epcot, especially like World Showcase. And last food and wine, because you know, I do my guides to the festivals, right? Last food and wine, food and wine starts in July. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> it was probably the hottest day I've ever experienced in Disney in my life. There is zero shade. And the little bit that you can find, man, take advantage of it. Because that park is incredibly hot. But Animal Kingdom, there was one day back in 2020 when the parks reopened where I literally had to leave Animal Kingdom. I was here for an hour and it was way too hot to handle. So they're both incredibly hot, but they're different types of hot. Okay, we have entered Dino Land because we are heading to Dinosaur. You can usually count on Dinosaur for having a lower wait time than some of the other attractions here in Animal Kingdom right now. It is a 10 minute wait. Dinosaur has a 40 inch height requirement. We are entering the Dino Institute and our ride vehicle will be the Time Rover, which is gonna look like a Jeep. And we're gonna head back in time to see some dinosaurs. Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeger, your friendly controller and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. But let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you and how you can help me make history today with the Time Rover. It's like this. If I can bring you back from the Cretaceous period, it stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur with you. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. He's an iguanodon, and I'm certain that he is the key to understanding these magnificent creatures. I tagged him with a locator during an unauthorized field trip. Otherwise, I'd be traveling with you. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Trust me, what could go wrong? Usually when it says 10 minute wait, it's usually because you watch the pre-show, and then it's just kind of a walk-on. So let's do it. Okay. Now, let's go get that dino. Computer, what are you tracking? Styracosaurus. Not our dino. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little ones. Aliramus. Hadusar. Raptor. Time to get serious. Computer, full stop. Identify. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go! Identify. Sauropod. Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. Carnotaurus. That's it! Abort mission! They're not gonna make it! They're not gonna make it! You made it! I knew you would! 
that was fun, but now on to our next park and mode of transportation. Okay, leaving Disney's Animal Kingdom and it's time to take Disney bus transportation. That is the only method of transportation other than car to get here. So we are going to head to the right for the actual Disney transportation. If you are staying at like the Swan and Dolphin or a Disney Partner Hotel on in Disney Springs, you're going to head to the left to the buses over in the parking lot to get back to your resort. And if you parked here, I'm so happy the trams are back to take you to your car because when they weren't here and I would park with my friend, wow, it was the longest walk of my life. <laughs> Make sure to check the bus directory to see where you're going. Remember, the buses do not go from a park to Disney Springs. So if you want to go to Disney Springs, you're going to either have to Uber there or take a bus to a resort and then take the bus to Disney Springs. Also, I was not aware of this, but actually minivan drop off is over in number 10 near the buses and not with the other lifts and Ubers. We learn something every day. Buses start running 45 minutes before a park opens, depending on which park you're going to, and stops running one hour after wherever park you're at closes. Remember, each park has different opening and closing times. Buses typically run anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. Usually when it's early in the morning or when a park closes, they do run more and more come way faster than that. And buses usually run to Disney Springs until 2 a.m. Here we go. Strollers do need to be pushed together when you get on the bus. This air condition is absolute heaven. The bus has actually had like a big refurb a few years ago and it is a really nice bus trip now. made it to Magic Kingdom. So I was thinking of stuff to do in Magic Kingdom that won't take too much time because we're losing daylight, we're losing park time. And I thought, well, how about we do a fun Main Street magic shot? Especially since now it costs an extra hundred dollars to have photo pass as a part of my annual pass. I wanna get my money's worth. Well, that was the quickest I was ever in Magic Kingdom. Literally like five minutes but <laughs> on we go. So you can get to Magic Kingdom by bus, by monorail, or by ferry boat. Welcome to the Richard F. Irvine Ferry. Now, personally, I never recommend the ferry over the monorail. It takes a very long time because the boat will wait here for quite a bit until it fills up a bit. And in the mornings and in the evenings, it is packed. And on hot days, you feel like a sardine. I have seen people pass out. It is not my favorite mode of transportation. And even if you think it's gonna be faster because you see the long line for the monorail, I'm gonna tell you, it's not gonna be faster. If the bottom gets very crowded, please go upstairs and space out. If you're looking to go to any of the Magic Kingdom area resorts, you can take their water taxis over to the Grand Floridian and Disney's Polynesian Resort and to Wilderness Lodge. You can also take the monorail to the Grand Floridian, the Polynesian, and Disney's Contemporary Resort, and that's where the monorail actually goes inside of the resort. Transportation and Ticket Center, also known as the TTC, and it's time to take the monorail. No, not back to Magic Kingdom, but the monorail to Epcot. Did you know that there was a monorail to Epcot? Some people don't know that. So if you are park hopping between Magic Kingdom and Epcot, you just take the monorail to the Transportation and Ticket Center, and then you transfer to whatever park monorail your heart desires. So one of the best things about the monorail and the ferry boat I forgot to mention is that you don't have to close your strollers when you get on. You can keep your kids sitting, chilling the entire ride. Maybe you're wondering, all of a sudden, Demi, you have all this knowledge on strollers. Yes, well, I took my two baby cousins for the first time um, and they were both in strollers and I've never had to deal with strollers ever. And wow, did I learn about Disney stroller culture Stroller, co stroller culture, wow, that is a tough word to say. And the biggest advice that I can give all of you is to bring stroller covers because you park your stroller, you go on a ride, it literally could have downpoured 
from the time you're on the ride by the time you get out and then your stroller is wet. We literally brought towels and put them on the seat so the kids wouldn't sit in a wet stroller. So now, now I feel like I'm a stroller expert. I definitely am not, but I am definitely now way more knowledgeable. And the monorails have ramps for wheelchairs and ECBs. Epcot. The Epcot monorail is just my absolute favorite. You get incredible views of the park, plus you get to see all of the construction going on. Stop for one second and take a photo of you with Spaceship Earth because this is just the most perfect spot as you exit the monorail. Okay, so Epcot is really great to come at night because especially in Future World, whatever we're calling it nowadays, the wait times are super low. So I decided to take four rides that had low wait times, put them in a spinner and let the spinner decide. I put in Spaceship Earth, Nemo, Living with the Land and Figment. Let's go see that purple dragon. Journey into imagination with Figment, the third version of this ride. I know a lot of 80s kids have nostalgia for the original attraction with the Dreamfinder, but this was my introduction to Figment, hello. And as much as I do love Eric Idle, who by the way, does not remember ever filming the videos to make this attraction, because he is our, our host of the attraction along with Figment, um, it just doesn't do it for me. <laughs> it's entrance to sensory labs and you go through lots of different sensory things and they, they bother me. They bother me. I really don't like to smell farts. I don't like it. But Figment is still very cute. It's also a no height requirement ride and kids really, really love it, especially when I took um, my one and a half year old cousin. And usually it has a very low wait time. Hello, on your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. There's sight, sound, <laughs> smell, touch, hoochie coochie go, and taste. Taste like chicken. Who is this? It's figment. Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. With M-I-G-L-E-N-T, you can see things differently. <laughs> sure, you can see with your eyes, but imagine what you could see if you used your imagination. Follow the bouncing figment. One spark of light can light your fancy. Your mind sees more than what your eyes see. Your sense of sight can make your fancy fly. There's more to sight than meets the eye. I love the song, but I hate the farts. The sun is setting. It is time to walk through beautiful world showcase through Canada, through the UK, and out of International Gateway. So after you leave the UK, the pathway splits. If you go that way over the bridge, you go to France, and you continue on into World Showcase. Otherwise, you come down this ramp, and this 
is the exit called International Gateway. So when you exit, you're exiting toward the boardwalk area hotels like the Yacht Club and the Beach Club. I've done tours at both of those hotels. I will link those videos for you here and put them in the description box below. Oh, and the Swan and Dolphin. I'll put those in there as well and the new Swan Reserve. But if you are going to Disney's Hollywood Studios, there are two ways to go. And one way is the Disney Skyliner. And then the other way is how we will end our night later. So stay tuned. The Skyliner starts in Epcot, goes to Disney's Riviera Resort, then goes to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, and that is the Skyliner hub. And from there, you change either to the Skyliner to Disney's Hollywood Studios or to Disney's Pop Century and Art of Animation Resorts. I've done tours on both of those resorts as well, and I will link them for you here as well. and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is at 25 minutes, so let's do it. Oh, hiya, folks. You want to take a ride on the train? never happens on this attraction, but I literally shed a tear tonight. Wow, <laughs> it just got to me, the song today. Well, it's not over yet, my friends. We still have one more mode of Disney transportation to ride tonight, so let's do it. Hi, yeah, I know it's, it's sunny out now and I'm wearing different clothes and uh, that's because it's the next day. So uh, after I rode Mickey and Minnie's, I decided to do a dining review and uh, it ran late and the last mode of transportation we needed to take, it was closed, it was after 11. But came back here today and we are gonna ride the friendship boats. So the friendship boats are technically different than the water taxis. These friendship boats go from Hollywood Studios and they stop at the Swan and Dolphin, Yacht and Beach Club, Disney's Boardwalk Inn, and then Epcot. If you are planning to go from Hollywood Studios to Epcot or vice versa, I do not recommend using the boat because the Skyliner will be much, much faster. But if you're staying at one of those resorts, 
this friendship boat is a great way to get to Disney's Hollywood Studios. You could also walk, but it's like a 20 minute walk. So friendship boats are great. There are also friendship boats in World Showcase in Epcot. It's only one now actually. It goes from Morocco to Canada. The difference in the friendship boats is that it has all this inside room. You have the cover over your head. There was a few outdoor seats, but unfortunately I couldn't get one today, so we have a window seat. Let's do the last mode of transportation. That was a quick five minute ride to the first stop, Swan and Dolphin. These friendship boats come every 20 to 25 minutes, so please be prepared. Well, my dudes, that was all the transportation here at Walt Disney World. We were so close. I feel like I lost a challenge, but I still am so happy that we got to do this and have a little bit of fun in the parks in between. And I hope you guys learned something today about the Disney transportation here. I think Disney does a really good job with transportation. I know a lot of people have issues with the buses. Please also understand at time of recording specifically, there is um, a lack of bus drivers. So that's why you may be waiting for a while or that's why, for instance, like if you're going to Disney's uh, Typhoon Lagoon or Blizzard Beach, you actually have to take a bus to Disney Springs and then transfer. They just simply don't have enough drivers. But let me know if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Let me know what is your favorite mode of Disney transportation, what is your least favorite mode, and what was your favorite part of today. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to your bell notifications so you don't miss anything that goes on this channel. Follow me on Instagram at Magical Hijinx. Check out the Patreon. Become a patron and get exclusive bonus content, bonus lives, a free dining guide to Walt Disney World by Disney for Foodies, and so much more. And you'll be helping me to continue bringing you great content like this to this channel and until next time I do I hope you guys get some hygiene very very soon. Ha, bye bye